do it. Okay. Barbarian Hour, John Watkins, six shirt. I'm also wearing his Go Ohio shirt um, that I, I'm, a, I'm giving. So he's going to, we, uh, we went rafting today. Didn't try to murder me. That was nice. Thank you. Um, his kids just did a uh, Barbarian five minute short. So the Barry and Lewis uh, five minute hour. <laughs> power, power five minute. But uh, shout out to Defense Soap. They hooked us up. We're going to be taking some baths in the glacial thaw of the Sandy River. And it's a beautiful sunset right now. It's uh, starting to happen at, on the, the uh, beautiful Saturday evening here in Sandy. John, first things first, where did you grow up? Where did you grow up? What's your background? Why do I know you? Barn, Ohio, where it all begun. The Miller family. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah. It was never a dull moment there. <laughs> never a dull moment. We're going to get into some stories. But uh, you graduated from what high school? Genoa Area High School. Genoa Area High School. Did you see that they had one of the all-time greatest performances at the Division Three State Tournament two, three years ago? I gave a shirt. So, yes. Yeah, you you were better undefeated. know that. Undefeated for two years, right? Two years, and then they had six state of uh, the fourteen state champs. Wow. Yeah, and then also, what's you like? Got a lot. He's got a deep background in wrestling. But do you not? Am I I'm wrong? Following the Miller family, yes. Okay. Um, Matt Lindland told me you were a crazy rafter. That's not normally a good sign if Matt Lindland says you're crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna agree with you there, sir. It's not good. One time I was on a rafting trip with Lindland, and he he slipped and fell. We were scouting this crazy rapid, and he slipped and fell, and he like banged his head on a rock really bad. Was that no helmet? No, he had a helmet on. Okay. But there was blood coming out of his ears, and I was like, I was like, "Are you okay, man?" And he's like, "Yeah, I got time for this. He's like, let's get in the raft. Let's do it." Like, the dude's a total. He's a mate. dude. He went to yeah. Russia and fought Fedor. I don't know what up fifty pounds. Right. He's a lunatic. No. Um, he's our former USA wrestling head Greco coach. Great guy, uh, Olympic silver medalist. I love him. Great guy. But yeah, he told me he's like, yeah, John's nuts. John's crazy. So if Lindland's saying that about you and your rafting, I think that that is. Uh, I don't know if it's commendable can, or can insane. I tell you a story about Lindland rafting. Tell yeah, of course. We're just, this is an open book. Go. So we're on the green truss, which is like this class five section of the white salmon. It's Lindland's first time. The water is like crazy. Like three is like pushing it big. It was four or five that day. And like, so Lindland gets in the boat with my buddy, Dan, you know, Dan. Dude, right? you took me on a section of it. Yeah. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I hate your guts. Why would you do that? You made it. You made it all right, right? Keep you going. Just keep going. Tell the, tell the, tell the, tell the green truss. White Salmon, Washington River, Matt Lima. Go. Yeah. So, <laughs> we have, my boat has a bad, I'm not in the boat with Matt. I mean, we're in different boats. We're, we're safety for each other. My boat has a bad time at Bob's Falls. We had a guy hang above Big Brother, this 26 water foot waterfall that like is just a monster. <laughs> and Lumlin comes back up and he helps us out. And then, then we get down to a rapid called Lower Zigzag. And then <laughs> we're all looking at this rapid. For, for, we're in a little canyon. We're like, oh, man, it just looks big and mean today. It looks awful. And we're like, well, who's going to go first? And and Josh and I in our boat, we're like, no, no, we're not going to go first. And, and Lindland's like, I'll go first. So Lindland and Dan go down Lower Zigzag. And they get into this hole. <laughs> you want to hydro, hole, hydro. Yeah, hydro, and it, and it, it, cir it, it returning grabs you and it circulates you. Recirculating hydro. Yeah. yeah. The Which is what I got caught in on the. And they're just spinning around and it's just going crazy. Are they above water though? They're above water. Boat's upright. But they both lose their paddles. Because so it's just get so, out of it. so violent. And it's just spinning around. Well, they, had, they brought spare paddles. And so. Like, they're going to be safe. So all they do is go to the back of the boat, undo their their. Uh, they're like ratchet bound in the back. I've yeah, seen it before, yeah, yeah. Undo their tether, get their 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 spares out, 
and start paddling out of this hole. Well, they get their spare paddles and they're starting to fight it, you know, and get, get their, their paddles in and then they lose their spare paddles. So what do you do? You do that throw bag? What do you do in that situation? Yes. We were, in a, we were in a canyon, so there was nothing we could do. Like we couldn't get close to them. We would go like right by them or get stuck in the hole ourselves. So we're just watching. And then Linlin takes his hands and goes over the boat and starts digging with his hands. And get, <laughs> that's how they got, they out, got the, out the hydraulic. Linlin just hanging over the boat with his hands just doing this. So the dude just, you, you could just tell he had no fear. And he never gave up. He's just, he's one of those people. Man. Talk about you frequently on this show. I've shown the rapid us at Sunset Falls, which is nothing to you. It's on, it made your, uh, it made your Motley crew bring the pow video though. Not that, not us running it, but you and Dan or you and somebody else running it and you guys just flipping over. Yeah. So, so if it made bring the pow, which the video gives me anxiety. <laughs> The greatest video not on the internet that only I have access to and you and maybe a handful of other people, right? And it's like your highlights of all these big qual scene, uh, East Fork of the Lewis, the North Umpqua, uh, White Salmon, help me out with some other ones, Cowlitz. Yeah, I think Give me some greatest hits. Some, some Cowlitz oh, is on did there. Did you guys do like this high desert one where it's like a rocky... High Desert Canyon. I don't know what that that's, is. Uh, oh, that's Upper got, Wind? That's where I got my... Upper Wind? No. Uh, that is... Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Chelan Gorge. That's where I got the scar. <laughs> Talk about the scar. <laughs> Dude, you rafted some mountains. Yeah. You did the Mosher Falls one that has never been run before, 70-footer. But go ahead. Go ahead with the... Uh, what's the scar from? Show, first off, get in there. Show everybody that. Oh, it's a big crack in the scar. I remember that. Yeah. So what was that? Almost 10 years ago. Uh, Chelan Gorge, yeah, so. Where is that? Give me, I don't know. It's east of Mount Rainier. It's kind of, it's like east of Wenatchee. If you so we're, we're, oh, Mount Rainier, sorry. I, was, I, I get a yeah. hood in Rainier. I sometimes I confuse them. Yeah. But, so, Wenatchee, I know where that is. Yeah, so okay. it's kind of, you got to go further, about an hour and a half northeast of Wenatchee, and, and that's uh, Chelan. And Chelan is, is it's, it's dam fed and they only do release two days out of the year. Uh, so, so you mark it on your calendar? <laughs> I mean, every, yeah, I mean, uh, all the way water people do. But you gotta sign a waiver before you go in there. It's run by a PUD and like, yeah, it's, uh, we got to a rapid called uh, Meat Locker. And, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Ram's Horn, Meat Locker. <laughs> uh, cinder Block and a Dryer. They all got names like that. They all have these ominous, horrible names. So you're in Meat Locker. Yeah. So we're at Meat Locker, and my yeah, Dan's like, he's my partner. He's like, oh, we don't have time to we don't have time to scout this. We're just gonna run it. He's like, these kayakers are gonna be pissed if we uh, if we take too much time. So we gotta go. He's like, just he's like, what do you think for the line? And I'm like, I don't know. I think we probably need to go left. And so. We go left and we get stuck on some rocks. In Chelan, because it's only flow for two days out of the year, the rocks are really sticky, really porous and grabby. And so like our boat gets stuck. They're not slimy like a lot of the rocks like most... are, are uh, algae yeah. slimy so and they'll slide over them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this is like every time we touched a rock, it was the boat would just stop. It would just grab and stop. So we're hanging over the waterfall and I get out of my seat and go up front and I paddle forward to get us off the rock to get to the waterfall. And then Dan think he's he's doing me a big favor. He puts his tree trunk arm here and like grabs me. But like, I couldn't get back in my seat because his arm was like there and he was trying to grab his paddle. And then, so we go over the waterfall and then just, it was just a big hit. I mean, I just hit something. I don't know what, had a helmet on. Probably a rock. And yeah, I think it was I had to rock. say it was probably a rock. But Did you go out? Very, for, yeah. Boat flipped, Did it boat knock you out? No. You didn't go unconscious? No, I, As we know that that's like the biggest right. problem yeah. in yeah. rafting would be going unconscious. Yeah. Because if you go unconscious, right. you, you have no control underwater. of keeping your right. chin up. Yes. And you, yeah. Seriously, you right. can't breathe underwater and yeah. you drown. Yeah. So um, why, what started you? Did you get first aid right away for your... 
Or yeah, finished, I mean, you finished it. Then. I, I was able to swim out, you know, so I was I was conscious and you know, like I was I was making sure that oh my legs, my arms, everything's working, you know, like because I was a little worried, you know, it was a big hit and uh, yeah. Yeah, what do you do at that point? You finish the run. Yeah, of course. Oh, I had to. I mean, you well, there, you can't get out. Right. It's a gorge. You're yeah. stuck. Yeah. yeah. It's you either raft out of it, and then the other only other real actual option is like a helo evacuation. And that's like the last, that's a life death situation. Right, right. Like an external fracture. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. Your head, your brains are laying out of your head or something, right? Like that's, <laughs> seriously, that's the only way to. If they, if they can get you out of the canyon, they would have to do a medical evacuation, right? That's literally the only way to get out of this. So that's a lot of your a lot of your rafting when you do it. That's literally it's either raft it, run it, or <laughs> medical evacuation. And some of them can't even do it because it's dense and it's massive. These dug fir trees in your yard and these cedars and these redwoods. They're, they don't allow for even them to be able to drop down like a uh, like a gurney. Not a gurney, but like a, a cage that they would put you in, which is just like a, a, ba a backboard they would strap you to. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, I've never seen that. Uh, but that, 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 that. That's literally the options. Yeah. I mean, there was, there was other boats there. You know, there was, you know, you, you rely on the, your, your, your fellow boaters for safety and, and you know, emergency situations. I've been on the giving and receive, you know, receiving end, so it's, yeah, it's just the culture. People get by, and, and you, yeah, I mean that that medevac heli lift. It's like not a thing. Is, it's, yeah, it's you've never rare. seen it. It's yeah. rare because, well, it's death, medical evacuation if they can save you, or run it. So literally, that's the three options. Am I wrong? Right. Yeah. Until so the you know, the, yeah, a lot it's of times. It's a cruel world. But it's but you know what you're in for. Yeah, you gotta be. You almost have to be self-sufficient on a lot of the runs here. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. You've taken me on two that I had no business being on. First two are well, the two I did North Uncle with you and Megan, and you guys did it on. You've done four with us. Yeah, I did the shoots. Yeah. The shoots, but North Uncle I did like a half a mile, and then I did the end. I just went and swam in the swimming holes. It was a hot day like today. Today was 100 degrees in some places, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, when you're on these glacially fed uh, rivers on a hot day, is there anything like it? I mean, it's great, but, you know, there's no visibility in the water. And that's, yeah, I was telling you, there's been four deaths on the Sandy River in the last two weeks. Not at, because of they were running white water. It's just the silk. Freak, freak accident. Like, who knows what happened, but, uh, you know, they... Yeah, I mean, you, you can't see where you're jumping or diving, and uh, yeah, obviously there's some danger there. So we jumped off about a 20, 25 footer today, maybe yeah. 20, 25. Yeah. Um, but you said it's a channel, and you did it first, so I felt pretty good about it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Wouldn't lead you astray there, man. I had, yeah. I had you. Great did the it. The landing and, and yeah. Jody would fly out and beat you up. <laughs> some bad on the ground. But okay, um, when you raft them though, and you know you're, you're going into like, um, what's the other one that you've done? You did this one that was like an ecological disaster. It was like an old silver mine. What was that one? And the railroad oh, tracks collapsed into yeah. it. Yeah, Robe Canyon. Robe Canyon. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about Robe Canyon. That one gives me anxiety. Yeah, Robe Canyon is a uh, really, really big water, class five. A lot, a lot of power moves. <laughs> Aren't there the railing, the, the rail, the actual railroad rail? Some of that's in the water, twisted up and stuff, isn't uh, it? Yeah, so the, 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 the mines dried up, you know, in the, the 1930s or something like that. So it was an abandoned copper. Line. Copper? They were going after silver, nickel, I think. Precious metals. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, but uh, it's it's a really cool run. There's there's two, to my knowledge, there's two first descents left on that that run. Rapids. One of them is called Landslide, which is just insane. And Granite Falls is the other. And Landslide. Boys had. Is there one called like? Is there Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees? Is there a rapid? Any of those like a murder rapid? Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Is there really one called Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Middle Fork of the American. Yeah, that's, that's so weird. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, uh, biggest waterfall you've ever run? Mosier Falls. Mosier Falls, where's that? So that's 15 minutes east of Hood River. Yeah. So it's it's in the Columbia River Gorge? Yeah. Towards the high desert side almost? Yeah, yeah. It didn't look high desert, was it winter when you ran it? Yeah, yeah, you can, you know, it's you, you have to get that one perfect flows, which is always spring. Um, so I Google John Watkins rafting Mosier Falls and it brings that up. Dan, first off, who's Dan? What's Dan's background? No, Dan McCain. He's the the, le the man, the myth, the legend for in the whitewater community for, for rafting. What does he run? He runs, he's run everything, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's, yeah. I think he's got the, the record for a waterfall. He ran a, a dam that's been now demolished. He broke his ribs, didn't he? Condit Dam. Uh, no. Uh, I, think he, I think he had a soft landing on that one. So you and Dan, Dan was in a different boat than you on the Mosier Falls. Yeah. Though. He was on the first boat. Yeah. The Mosier Falls one has like a tongue at the bottom where it's, but it looks like on Mosier Falls, like when people, if they Google this, John Watkins rafting, Mosier Falls. It's, it's the music gives me anxiety. But it looks if you go a foot left or a foot right too much. Done deal, right? Definitely. You guys had safety for that one. Yeah. What happens? Tell me about Mosier Falls, how you scout it, and how'd you even figure out you could run it? Yeah, that one is uh, definitely want to spend the time looking at it, you know, thinking about your lines and flows, most, most importantly, but what it, it's it's 70 feet top to bottom but at like 35 it's got a little kick out so yeah. it helps you a lot but you got to make sure you're, you're lined up right for that help but if you don't get the kick out you just hit rocks uh yeah you're yeah if too far left would be too bad because then you might catch that little kick out and then spin which uh, a bad landing. kill both people uh, i mean yeah i don't, I, I don't know you know i don't never seen any You're never running it again probably not yeah i think it's only been run a handful of times and people a lot of people look at it they see the videos they they drive out there they look at it you're better boaters than me and they say it's not worth it and you got lucky you get that yeah yeah i mean i had a good Dude, it was crazy yeah it's crazy i show the video to people and they're like that's what and they have no idea and just my my brief experiences you can't see what's over the horizon you can't really plan for it you've got to look and you have to know what you're looking at you have to know well i gotta catch this tongue right here or i gotta catch that second rock where there's a float like you know what you're doing i don't know what i'm doing right yeah i don't think people get what goes into scouting it i don't know it's not what does it do any good for a guy like me to go scout a river i don't know what i'm looking at all right yeah, it's, it takes a lot of time, a lot of experience, and you're right. You start to look for the little things, like we call them guard rocks, you know, that, that could mess up your line. Little eddy lines, little, you know, sometimes you'll see a current, a, a lateral on a lip, and you always those always give me a lot of pause, you know, because you, you really think about, okay, not where I want to be, you know, opposite where that lateral is taking me, a foot or two is where, where we want to go, and then that lateral will do the rest. He's, he's got to like, you're playing a dynamic system, so it's, it's you know. The river's not the same any one day. And that's the other fact. The river's different every single day. This river's different out here beside your house. The Sandy River depends how, how hot it is, how much more thaw there was, because this is glacially fed from the snowpack and the glacier on the mountain right yeah so it's going to be different every day yeah and and there's other factors too i mean wood you call it the furniture the fur <laughs> you were the one to call it the furniture right yeah, I, but it's like that's your only thing you fear actually that i've ever seen you fear yeah it's a uh, strainer right those, getting strainered right those are, can you explain it to scotty what is when you get strainered so the fallen tree usually with fresh limbs are you know in that water and especially if they're below water if you swim there that's obviously going to be a tough place to swim and get out you know because you're going to be fighting that hydraulic and likely the tree limbs are stronger it's strong enough to hold you and yeah that's uh, that doesn't end well for a lot of people in that sort of circumstance so can you pull someone out could you throw a throw bag and get someone out or not is it is the, is the 
high drug pressure too much. You know, when you're throwing a throw bag to someone, you, you throw the throw bag, but can they grab it? Do they know, are they oriented? Especially if they're underwater, it's, yeah. I always like to wait on a throw bag if they can get up and say, you know, be some sort of somewhat cognizant of their whereabouts surroundings. And then when the throw bag shows up, they can grab it. Because if you throw a bat throw bag, they don't grab it. But then they pop up f five seconds later and they're like, where's the throw bag? And you're like, I already threw it. I got to bag it back up and throw it to you. <laughs> like, they're just, they're just trying to survive. Yeah, yeah it's not. Yeah, so A lot of issues. Yeah, no, it's, it's for real. Okay, the realest issue, though. Has a lot of the craziness subsided in the runs that you take and will and won't take? Has it changed since you become a father? Definitely, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. You know, pushing it was fun and enjoyable going exploratory. You, know, you get to see these special places. But, you know, there's nothing like the, the love of your family and children and uh, seeing them healthy and happy and and so yeah for sure i've dialed that back but the thing about it is we've already talked about it a lot of the stuff once you start running it you gotta finish running it so do you put yourself in less situations where i just gotta run this or i'm just not gonna run that at all so i can go home to my family mm, yeah i mean but yeah if you know the run you, you know those situations and you just omit them right off the bat right you don't you don't even put on you know you or you know, like, don't get me wrong i'd love to work back up to some of the uh you know the class five runs i used to do but they're uh, i'm not ready right now i'd have to you know get better and you, i mean if you're rafting you almost have to have a partner and so, you know, I'd have to figure that out. And, you know, that's, that's another dilemma, you know, is there's not many people out there that, that want to attempt that stuff, you know? And so, uh, yeah, I mean, for many reasons, it, you know, you don't want to push that. So why would you take me on some of the things that you, why would you ever assume that I can do Houston Falls or Sunset Falls or Green Trust or any of these? What would make you assume that, that <laughs> I tell people, I'm like, it's almost like he gives me a rafting book the night before and tells me to sleep on it and through osmosis. Why, why, why do you, why are you so overly confident in my ability? I don't understand. So Zeb used to be able to hold his breath for probably what, three minutes? No, back a long time. It was over, yeah, it was a couple minutes. When we were kids, he was a really good swimmer. Definitely a better swimmer than me. But I got out, I, I was able to live in this multiple situations you put me in. I'm not thankful for their experiences I have. But do you do that to anybody else? Would you take Claude? No. Would you take Claude out and booby trap him like that? I know you'd like to take my brother Tate out. <laughs> you think Tate would go with me? No, he knows. <laughs> he knows you're nuts. But I just, I'm like not a lot of raft with you. Like I sent a video today, uh, home to my wife of uh, luckily your kids were on the boat because then i was like well yeah his kids on the boat so he wasn't trying to kill me so we're good that was good that was good but um we did sunset falls which is the east fork of the lewis yeah and we did it in uh, it was christmas eve and it caught me and it pulled me in walk through that scenario what happened what you were thinking as you were trying to you were frog kicking pulling on the boat and you were like the boat was stuck on something what was the boat stuck on? It was in the hydraulic. So it was in the hydraulic. But it was stuck on me. Yes. you Because I wouldn't let go of the boat. It, and you were in the hydraulic. But I should have just let go of the boat, let it push me down, you ball it, up, yeah. and it kicks you out. Yeah, that's that's the uh, the standard way to exit a hydraulic is, you know, uh, go deep, ball up, you know, hold your breath for about four or five seconds, and then you should catch that outflow. And you just hung on to that boat which i mean I, I, you're, it's you an instinct I'm not it's an instinct you. right you know it was above water you were below anything you could do to get a breath but yeah no that, let's hear your side of that because you were there for what 50 seconds or something 52 <laughs> yeah, it's a long time so 
Oh, you want to hear my side? Are you sure you want to hear my side of it? Okay. So, it looks like somebody, we're getting, oh man, we're getting some really active uh, watching in there on the, uh, it's like full contact watching on the bay window there. Right. Okay. So, my perspective of it. Well, first off, I showed the video to my dad, and my dad's like, why isn't the person who's shooting the video throwing you a rope or trying to? I go, Dad, it's on a tripod. Just run it. And he's like, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> well, here, I, okay, so I'll give it to you. We're driving to the thing, and it's a lot of the stuff you do is usually like a bicycle. These are, there, there's two types of vehicles involved because you got to drop off, drop in, and then take out. So you need two vehicles, one way or another, whether it's a bike stashed in the weeds, ride back to the vehicle, then pick the raft up, there's like that. So I rented a Subaru, I was on my way to Hawaii the next day for that Flow Wrestling event, remember? It was in between Reno and Hawaii for the Flow Wrestling stuff I was doing. And um, I had a Subaru, you were in your truck, we drove up and you're like, this is what's gonna happen. You're like, I'm gonna go grab a couple beers and I'm like, all right. So it was like, you kept, you're, you're giving me the vision and the, you're telling me and you, and then like we're pumping the boat up and you throw it in dog poop. And I'm like, oh, this is, this sucks. So then you slammed a couple of beers and you're like, this is what's going to happen. We're scouting it. And then you're like, ah, we're going to stick this and this is going to happen. And we're going to go right. And you drop right into another class four, I think. Is that what happens? Or three? There's a class three above. The Which we did. Yeah. Yeah. You flow down to it, yeah, which we did. Yeah. And then what happens, but you've got to get, if I when I got left after, you got to get in that cave left when you fall in the boat. Right. What's after it? Is that a class four after it? No, it's it's a chill section. Got it. it. It's. Anyhow, you're telling me all and you're scouting it. Well, as we're getting closer to it, I mean, you, you had a couple of rain here and I was like, yeah, he's, he's all right. And then you're like, you're super confident. And then like we got in the water and we did it and. You're like, hey, if we got to swim, you know, make sure you get left into that cave. And then you're like, as we got closer, you're like, hey, when you got to swim, get left. Make sure you get left. And I'm like, wait a minute. He was super confident like 25 minutes ago. And his confidence just went off a cliff. <laughs> That's when I knew I was in for it. Wow. That's my side of the wow. story. All right. All right. Is that fair? Uh, you know, I mean, you swam, so it didn't go so well. I mean, I, I swam too, but yeah, it, it, uh, you know, it's one of those. I, uh, I you know, I, I, <laughs> you'd be so affected by it. So you know, I was like, it's like, yeah. Hey, uh, Whatever you do, Zeb, do not lose my paddle. <laughs> Cut the paddle. <laughs> Cut the paddle. Yeah. Okay, so we get out of it. I swim over to the cave where you drag the boat over and I'm attached to it. And you're yelling at me. And you're like, Zeb, 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 are you having a heart attack? I'm like, no, I'm not having a heart attack. Shut up. And then you're like, we got to get in this boat. And we got we to gotta paddle across that. So then we had to paddle across to get to pull the boat out. And I was like, yeah, we're done. I'm done today. So it was a short day. It was about a half mile day on the uh, east fork of the Lewis. But I made it. I got a good story to tell, and I know not to laugh with you. Hopefully not in the future where you're trying to kill me. Maybe you'll change your mind sometime. Right? <sighs> okay. So we did that one, and then the Houston Falls one before I went to the 2012 Olympics. And um, so we did it once. Well, first off, we're doing that one, and you're on that truss bridge above it, looking down at Houston Falls with the White Salmon River. And I was like... There was a guided tour, and you're like, I'm like, why are they, what are they doing? They got a rope attached to one side of it, and they're feeding it down to another person. I'm like, what's that? And you're like, Zeb, these aren't row rafters. I'm like, all right. You're like, we're going to run the so way went up. We did the green truss section, not the Matt Linlin. White Sam, yeah, middle white. Middle, middle white, yeah. Right? You ran the middle light. Yeah, metal light. Sorry. Not what Linlin did with you. But anyhow, I'm like, we do it, get to the end, we run it, and the boat like tacos in half, and my face was numb for like half an hour. I was like, is my face bleeding? And you're like, no, your face isn't bleeding. 
But then you're like, we got to do this again. Let's go. Don't lose my pedals. And we tried to cut across when we first did it. And when we drug back up, we, we, we inserted from the other side of the river. Now's how we got a, a cleaner line. Would that be yeah. a, all right? Yeah. Yeah. We stuck it the second time. Yeah. And some hippie chick was like, in the video. And it was a good day. And then I jumped off a couple of the bridges. And it was see, a good time. see, all three. That one wasn't bad. Redemption. But, but then the, the one, the, the Sunset Falls was like total booby trap. But to be fair, when we were like five or six years old, you were coming down the, I came down the slide and you were standing on the end of it and I undercut you and you hit your head and you fell in the pool. It's a thing that happened. So payment there. And then I always used to pitch to you because we had a, uh, your dad bought the, put a backstop up and we had a uh, field. All the home runs went in the pond though, in the Rankin's pond. And I hit you with a lot of curveballs and didn't curve. So it might be that, it was right? Great. I remember I was like, "Come on, son. one fastball, one fastball," and it would be a curveball. Didn't curve. Didn't curve. Didn't curve. Didn't curve. Okay. So uh, when you grow up in Northwest Ohio, there's not much to do. There's no elevation change greater than 20 feet, uh, up or down. That's not man-made. That's a thing. Yeah. Um, when you come out to a place like this. What's the first thing that catches your, like, obviously the, the topography's a, a game changer. What drew you to rafting to, to start out here? Always loved water. Always loved swimming. You know, holding my breath. You know, long days with Zeb in the pools and ponds in our neighborhood. And, yeah, you know, then I went on the Deschutes River. Is that the first? Well, you did it before. I did it with my parents, yeah. Is that what it was? I mean, you, you, you show up there, you can rent a raft. And I was like, oh, this is great. I'll just rent rafts and run all these different runs in Oregon. But mopping mop, mop, in the Deschutes is an anomaly. Most places, What's in the desert? Yeah, they most places don't rent out that gear to you. It's crazy. So, it's so, really? Yeah, so like, you know. It was, is it still a thing? Yeah. U-boat was the one yeah, we did. Yeah, so they still rent them out. And really? The star and, uh, yeah, so it's it's super cool, but they, you know, like other, I was like calling North Umpqua, and they're like, we don't rent our boats. If you want to go on a guided trip with us, you can do that. That was me and Megan when we did that. Yeah, yeah, so it, uh, but, you know, it was such a, a fun adventure, and, you know. We, that was cool, but we had, there was a rapid at the end of it. What is that? Uh, Dude, it's ridiculous. Oak, Oak, uh, Oak Springs is what it's you called. You run that? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. You're talking Sharers Falls. So that's that's outside of that. Yeah, Sharers Falls is like a class five plus. And, uh, you shouldn't run it because there's uh, there's fishing nets in it. The, the, oh. There's uh, Native American fishing platforms and they would use fishing nets. And so if you swam that, the, you're, the probably, chance... you're probably going into a fishing net, which is no bueno. You're not coming out. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's worse than strainer. Similar to strainer. Man-made strainer. Right, yeah. So not too many people run that. Yeah. Would you? No, no. Not, Would you have... Not even 10, 10 years, years ago. ago. No. Fishing that, even, you know, and that's, there's a couple rapids out there that just have the, that stigma or, you know, those problems. Uh, you know, and that's just one, just, just way too, too much risk. Okay. So you leave the flatlands in Northwest Ohio. What was it like growing up in the flatlands in Northwest Ohio, next to the Millers? Never a dull moment. That was like, like free you, entertainment. You can do whatever you you can talk about whatever you want. I didn't even care. <clears throat> give me your give me some top stories about growing up next to my family. Well, I just remember you and I playing baseball and football on the side lot. My dad would you'd throw the football to us. And Tate would always be around, right? Tate would always be like, hey, you guys need to come work, or oh, I'm going to play, or whatever. And then it would always erupt into a fight, and Tate would beat us up, remember? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he'd beat you up, yeah. and then he'd beat me up. Yes. Then but we... my dad was like, all right, you guys, you guys can do this. Here's how you do it. John, you just grab his legs, and then Zab, you just pummel him. <laughs> and so we got him, remember? Yeah. I would grab his legs. And then you'd be beating him up on the top. 
I remember hitting him with a bat one time, and I was like, God, do you remember that? No, I remember that, yeah. One time he's like, we were going to go play baseball, right? Yeah. And we got in the golf cart. You had the bat. And he's like, hey, we're going to do some work. We're going to split some wood and stack it and all this stuff. And it's the middle of the summer. We're like, no, we're going to go play baseball. And I think he ripped you out of the, the golf cart and started beating you up. I jumped on top of him, started beating me up. <laughs> but you had time to go grab the bat. And I whacked him in the gut. Whacked him in the gut. Right, right in the, the hip gut. Yeah, like, ooh. And he fell down. He's like, oh. <laughs> and, then, and then you just get back in the golf cart. We went and played baseball. We went and baseball. I love it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. What about my dad? T Bone, yeah. Yeah, so Tom had a way. He was, he, uh, I, the biggest memory was the, yep. <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> Funny name until I stood right in front of him. What? What do you want? <clears throat> oh my God! What I'm doing? When did you start? Did you start going to wrestling stuff? You came to a bunch of wrestling stuff, didn't you? Yeah, I watched a lot of your matches. High school, state, uh, Kent State. Do you realize people thought you were a Kent Stater? I wish I was. <laughs> What a great school. Oh, where did you go to college and what do you do now? Toledo Engineering. Yeah, I've got a day job. Yeah, and uh, What's work for a utility and out here in uh, Oregon. Is it so, still Portland General Electric? Portland General Electric, yep. What, about 15 years now? 16, yeah. 16 years? Wow. What brought you out here, by the way? What why, What brought you to the position? Uh, it was a job. It was Armstrong World Industry. So first job out of college, bounced me around Pennsylvania. Lancaster, PA, uh, West PA, which I really enjoyed West PA. I thought that was a cool Beaver area. Falls? Yeah, Beaver Falls. Lancaster's that world headquarters, isn't it? Right, yeah. And then they moved me to St. Helens, Oregon. And uh, yeah, I mean, came out here and fell in love with it. I was like, whoa, this place is amazing. Never had been west of the Mississippi before my interview with the, you know, the facility. I was just like, well, I just got off the plane and it smelled like- it Smells like pine, pine trees. Pine goodness, yeah. kind of like. Oh, this place is great, you know, and then you, you learn more and more, and you're just like, oh, this is great. So, uh, I haven't gone back. So, I have the Burnettes with me this week, and their minds are already blown. They couldn't believe the water's 40 degrees and it's 100 degrees out. They couldn't believe it. They were like, this is unreal. Their minds are still blown inside. Uh, favorite thing about being out here, like, I, I can tell you this. Ian and I used to come out and stay with you. Remember, Ian would do the Oregon yeah. State camps, we climbed Mount St. Helens, went to the Redwoods, we went all around, and then Ian worked out here for four years for Oregon State. He was an assistant coach. And that all came because I just went down and started interviewing Jim Zaleski and interviewing Kevin Roberts. Kevin Roberts, a really good friend of mine. He lives in Spokane now. He was the assistant coach that got Ian in, in, in at Oregon State. So it's kind of crazy how things happen. Favorite summer. What's your favorite summer that you ever had out here? Whether it was with your wife or whatever it is. What's your favorite summer? Favorite summer that were you... Because you're working a full-time job. And then you're going and doing all this rafting stuff on like three-day weekends and stuff, right? Favorite summer. Yeah. Uh, there's just a lot of good ones. Yeah. It, uh, the, the, the backpacking is, is really enjoyable. So I think a couple of years ago, we went to Olympic Peninsula. I was at Lake, Sand Point. Um, and if you can do that backpacking trip, it's just unbelievable. It's the one I was just telling you about with the, you know, Peninsula, one side's just a beautiful beach the other side is tidal pools uh super easy hike but it's a, a three 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 triangle loop uh nine miles yeah nine miles and so it's uh but saw awesome wildlife black bear it was i was <laughs> burying my son in sand and uh, then all of a sudden a black bear shows up this is a crazy crazy video i have of it oh that's and, right and uh yeah i mean it, it didn't mess with us but Still, you know, just seeing the wildlife and, um, yeah, just that experience. You know. Lost Coast. Lost Coast is another one that, yeah, we really had a good time. And I know you and Sarah went, Dude, right? it's a litmus test. It's where I found out my wife was the one. Nice. She stayed in a tent with me. First off, you had, like, really good weather. Yeah. When we went, it rained the first two days solid. And what's her name? What was her name? What was Sherry. Her? Sherry. <laughs> you have some videos of Sherry telling stories, right? I have videos of Sherry telling stories. Sherry's the shuttle. She's the shuttle from 
White Thorn, Shelter Cove, yeah. to Petrolia. Yeah. Oh, man. That's a really cool one. That's a... But I think more and more people know about that one. So it's like you got to get in line. And it's a lottery now. I, I haven't been back since... Yeah, wow. Ten, ten years ago. I'm excited. Do you still follow wrestling? I know that you guys, you were in with my family. Do you follow wrestling? Like, are you a casual wrestling follower? Do you watch the NCAA Finals every year? What are you watching wrestling? Do you pay attention to much wrestling? Yeah, yeah. I like to watch your podcast and then some of the people that you talk about or you interview. I like to to look up, you know, and then, you know, it's uh, exciting stuff. I always, you know, I was just talking about the uh, David Taylor, Kyle Dake final. Like, I mean, what an amazing match that was. And, and how both of those guys are just phenomenal, you know, career guys and, and yeah. how like, coaching and you know just unreal to see the uh the level of competition and, and yeah I, i'm just uh i've always been enthralled by it so it's it's really really cool to watch i, I like to watch the espn finals and he, um uh, jd bergman right yeah, yeah jd he, bergman he, does he, some he, stuff he, yeah he yeah would. do you, okay so your brother-in-law's a penn state guy Brother-in-law's Penn State grad, and your wife's Bucknell. Where did your sister-in-law go? Colorado. Colorado. So she's, but those two went to schools where it was big wrestling, and your wife played college soccer. So it's like kind of cool that you still are in touch with it, and there's two schools. They went to two schools with great programs. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, biggest thing that – do you think you're going to try and get your kids to wrestle? Is there anything like that with wrestling? Yeah. To talk about your son, right? Yeah, yeah. My son just loves uh, contact and stuff. I was not a wrestler, but, uh, you know, I think we're going to give it a go this year. Last year, wrestling was shut down in Oregon in the, at the high school or school level. Yeah. Because of, you know, pandemic. Great school. So, and, uh, but, you know, I think we're going to give it a go this year. I think uh, – I think he would enjoy it, you know. I mean, he may not be the best at it, but you know, just getting out there, scrapping, and yeah, you know, just having fun with it. You know, so that's, you know, he's always trying to wrestle his friends, and you know, some friends don't like that, and so <laughs> sister, does better, he wrestle his sister. Yeah, it turns into a fight, doesn't it? yeah, they'll, they'll they'll get into it every now and again, but no, nah, they're pretty good about it. Okay. Anything that you want to share? Whether it's your favorite story about my brother beating me up, your favorite story about picking me up on the side of the road, whatever it may be. Did you bailed me a lot of, out of the grease a lot? I'm just going to put it out there. Bailed me out of the grease a lot. Bailed me out of the grease a lot. Especially with my brother Tate. But um, favorite Tom Miller story, Chad Miller story, Ferd Miller story, Tate Miller story. Is there one that comes to mind that you think of and tell people all the time? Do people believe you when you tell the stories? <laughs> you know, the Tate stories are the they're the ones that stand out the most, right? The yeah. baseball bat one. And, and the thing about Tate is he would never forget. You know, like I, I like I remember one time I don't know what I did to him. I don't think I hit him with a baseball or something like that. And he's like, I'm gonna beat you up. I'm gonna beat you up. And I ran and ran and ran. Just like kind of slow. We could actually run <laughs> away. He slow. He was dog slow. <laughs> But I would like get in my house and lock the door, and he'd be like pounding it. Then he'd like go home. The next day he'd come by and he'd be like, "I'm gonna beat you up, John." <laughs> just... it's a bit good. Oh. oh my god! Oh man! Uh, no escape! No escape! <laughs> All right. Anything else you got for me? That's it, man. Let's keep doing it. Let's go on the river, and I'll stay off the wrestling mat. <laughs> Okay, I just question. Here's a question. What if I would have taken you to a Kent State wrestling practice? What would have happened to you? So that scenario pretty much did happen. If you remember at your lake house. You and Josie. Lake Erie, yeah. Josie beat you up. Yeah, I still have the grass stains on my back from that <laughs> one. Josie got you. Didn't he throw you in a bush? Oh, he's like... He's like, let's wrestle. And I'm like, I weigh 50 more pounds than you. I should be able to handle this. Did he throttle you? Oh, yeah. He did me down in like 10 seconds. And he, oh, I was on my back. And he's just like, <laughs> cradling me. And I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> 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 How about when your dad and Tate got into it in the side yard? Where the addition is, they had like that addition room. It was your internet room. 
your internet room, right? Remember the computer was in that room? Like you walk in the house and it was to the left? Yeah. Tate and your dad got into a fight there. And your dad's like, you ain't so tough. And he kind of pounded your dad and felt really bad for your dad. Yeah. Your dad's well, a really good guy. Tate's going to beat up everybody. Right? Tate's going to Tate, isn't he? Yeah. Love it. All right. What about the boxing gloves? What? Jim Jordan always tells the box glove story. You know, the, you're probably your favorite Republican uh, congressman. He always tells the story about he was recruiting Bird, and he came, and uh, we only had a one. We had one pair. Tate's a lefty, I'm a righty, so my dad gave us a boxing glove. <laughs> Tate kicked the shit out of me, right? Like just beat the tar out of me. I'm crying. <sighs> my dad went and bought him like 20 cheeseburgers, and him and Russ Alexson thought it was great. <laughs> Hillbillies, just hillbilly stuff. I, mean, I don't know what else to tell you. I'm like, yeah. you know, li literally, Jim Jordan still tells the story. Oh, I remember that. And I'm like, oh, dude, you were the greatest training partner ever. Remember I used to run at night and you would do what you, you, you did the thing that your kid was doing to me tonight. <laughs> hey, Zab, what's X plus seven minus Y? And your kid was like super nice. And he was like, no offense, you really just don't know anything about math. And I'm like, that is true. <laughs> to be fair, that is true. That is very true. But you, you, I would run, and you would ride the 10 speed by me. You would like, what did you have, a giant? Did you have a giant? Giant butt. Yeah, a giant, well, it was giant <laughs> butt. Butte, Butte, right? Yeah, you had a giant bite. Yeah. And you'd run next to me, and you would just talk. I couldn't talk because I was running 500 miles. And then at the end, I remember, I would always sprint from the red barn to my parents' driveway. And that was like the edge. I can tell you, like, and for me in track, those training, because I would do track practice, and then I would come home and do those with you, and you wouldn't shut up and ask me stupid questions the whole time. And just like, well, your kids' questions were actually real questions. Your questions were just like to annoy me or to like <laughs> help me not suffer as much, or I don't know. Do you remember that though? Yeah. So, so the physical pain was replaced by the uh, frustration and anger with my questions. See? Oh my I helped God. you out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god alright <clears throat> shout out we're gonna get a glacial bath here probably gonna get Scotty Burnett getting a glacial bath it's 100 degrees today here in Sandy Oregon but a beautiful day nonetheless a lot of shade here a lot of shade here at John's a lot of Doug furs and just different types of this, uh, palm, or what would we call them? They are conifers, conifers right? Because those are deciduous trees right there. That, that's a deciduous tree. These are conifers. Palm trees would be tropical. All right. Rock it up. Thanks for coming on. I think the five-minute episode with your son and daughter is better. <laughs> They're breaking it down better. I think you're right. All right. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> See ya.